Aloha, thank you for joining us today for SBA America. Well, actually, we're looking at SBA Hawaii. I'm Jane Sawyer. I'm the District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration here in the Hawaii Pacific region. We're here to talk to you today about small businesses and what they're doing in Hawaii and why they have such a big impact on our island state. I'm uh, happy to be here talk about this with some of the small businesses that SBA has been affiliated with over the years. How we've watched them grow, how they've done it, and they're going to share some of their experiences with you. SBA is a uh, U.S. federal um, organization and independently funded, and we help businesses start, grow, prosper. That's our mission, and we do that by providing capital, creating a better ecosystem for small businesses to thrive, and also helping them with contractors, contracting with the federal government, and consulting, training, and technical assistance. We're going to talk today with Tariq Sultan of Sultan Ventures, who has been affiliated with the SBA and does a lot of great work here in Hawaii with small businesses. We're interested. Welcome. We're glad to see you today. Hi. Uh, oh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think we'll really just like to hear a little bit about your business, sure. about you, how you got started in this, and where your kind of entrepreneurial adventure really started. Sure. So uh, my name is Tarek Sultan, founding partner of Sultan Ventures. We're a boutique venture firm located here and headquartered here in Hawaii. We work with and invest in startups, uh, primarily in Hawaii, but we work with startups and uh, national entities, well, nationally. Um, under Sultan Ventures, we, you know, we, we say we're a boutique venture firm, but really um, more, we're more than that. We're a community, startup community, ecosystem builders. And so we take a holistic approach to working with the community. So it's not just about investing uh, capital, but it's about investing time, energy, resources, mentorship, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And you mentioned you're a co-founder. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you sure. get started? And so um, originally, it's the Sultan Ventures was founded by myself, my brother, and my sister. We had a diverse set of um, back, uh, diverse set of backgrounds. So mm -hmm. sister is an MD, PhD. My brother had a uh, finance undergrad, you know, a decade of IT experience. I was pre-med undergrad, um, went and got my MBA. So between the three of us, we kind of can tackle a lot of different sectors. Um, sister is since, she's a, like I said, MD, PhD. So she's a practicing physician now and actually just started her own OBGYN clinic. Uh, the day-to-day -day operations of Salt and Ventures fall more on uh, Omar, my, my brother, and, and mm -hmm. Uh, partner in Sultan Ventures as well as Accelerate UH. Um, so yeah, so kind so of a So you family. have a very entrepreneurial family. Yes. Where do you think that came from? So often we hear about people who really have no inc inclination at all to sure. start a business or want to be entrepreneurial or just mm -hmm. never think that they could do that. Yeah. Where no, did you guys get that uh <laughs> that drive. drive, yeah. yeah. So that's a great question. Um, originally, you know, we, I, like I said, I was pre-med undergrad. The, the drive for me was about helping others, right? And mm -hmm. I think you'll find that as a common um, answer from a lot of entrepreneurs. They want to do good and do well in the world. So that's kind of where our, our drive came from was our individual and collective desire to help others, right? Mm -hmm. And so whether that's from a medical standpoint, so why my sister is you know, an MD and a PhD, or um, why we founded Sultan Ventures was to help um, we believe in a, a rising tide raises all ships type of mentality. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one of the pillars of Sultan Ventures. The other, another pillar is education. Um, so we definitely believe in that type of giving back to the community. And for at least me personally, I believe that the best way to do that is through entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. You can literally change the world through your vision. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that idea. Um, you, were you all in Hawaii or why did, did you pick Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Or Hawaii does have that giving <laughs> culture, but not yeah. necessarily always entrepreneurial sure so we so no and originally like i said none of us necessarily thought we'd go down this entrepreneur path we moved to hawaii for just a plethora of different reasons my sister mm -hmm. was doing her residency program here at kapiolani hospital and that was kind of the catalyst for the whole family to move out um went what really kind of was the tipping point was going through the mba program at uh, shiloh college of business while we were doing research at the med school <laughs> for oh. hawaii um we started to realize how like exciting it was to do to work with the entrepreneurial community Omar had done a lot of work overseas and um, even in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, so he had already had a taste of that entrepreneurship um, mm -hmm. culture and that, that you know private equity venture capital type of experience. But um, it was out here in Hawaii that all of a sudden that ignited that spark in me, at least. Mm -hmm. So there was that interest. Was it also recognizing that there's a gap here? Um, yeah. So there's a gap in not in that um, that there isn't enough capital, that there isn't enough talent. It's that. Um, 
the everything was kind of in its own distinct silos and not connected, and that's where mm -hmm. the gap was. So when we started Sultan Ventures, uh, we actually acted as the bridge to a lot of between a lot of investors and startups, and so mm -hmm. it was kind of this pre-accelerator notion. Um, you know, people have heard, had kind of heard of incubators, but they weren't necessarily. Um, connecting to investors, for example, right? And so we acted as that bridge between startups and investors. So initially we would work with startups, kind of fill in operational roles in management because there is a lack of population density here, mm -hmm. not an, a lack of talent, right? Um, so we'd work with those teams and help them raise fi uh, financing. We'd also work with investors and provide diligence for a number of their opportunities, mm -hmm. fill in operational goals in their deal flow, and then, of course, because we were working on both sides of the fence, we'd be the bridge between the two. Mm -hmm. So you, even when you started with Sultan Ventures, you had the accelerator concept in mind. Accelerators, maybe we, you can explain a little bit about the accelerator piece. Sure. So accelerators in general, um, they offer, they're a very distinct, um, they're more than just an incubator, right? A lot of people think about accelerators and incubators as interchangeable mm -hmm. words. In incubators doesn't necessarily have a set timeline. Usually they're either a nonprofit or some type of economic development um, entity. Accelerators have set timelines with um, most, almost always an investment component associated mm -hmm. with it. So you can have anywhere from like three to six month programs. There's pretty standard. Um, the standard investment amount is around 20, 25,000. Maybe sometimes you'll, ha you'll see programs that are above 50 mm -hmm. um, in exchange for equity, right? Incubators mm -hmm. don't necessarily do that. So it's the very, very co um, core goal of an accelerator is to either accelerate success or to mm -hmm. accelerate failure, right? But mm -hmm. either way, um, you want to leave knowing that you should continue working on this endeavor or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, so SBA, um, as a federal agency, started getting involved with accelerators in about 2014. So we were very, very pleased that to represent Hawaii in that, that second round in 2015, we had three firms um, that got accelerator award prizes. And one of them was Accelerate UH, yep. which is a newer effort that came out of Sultan Ventures partnering with UH. Sure. Um, yeah. Would you like to talk about yeah, that a little absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Super, super excited to get that. Um, so with that award comes a, a $50,000 grant, but for us, it, it the money was nice, um, mm -hmm. but it was the validation, the national recognition that we are doing amazing stuff here in Hawaii. Um, and the fact that three different entities got it focused mm -hmm. on three different sectors is, is amazing. And it's a real testament to the innovation mm -hmm. that's occurring here in the mm -hmm. state. I think people were probably across the country were a little bit surprised to see <laughs> Little Hawaii yeah. jump up with no, three awards. Um, one in multimedia technologies, one for food innovation on mm -hmm. Maui. Um, but now you've been able to, how many cohorts or how many classes, courses, training sessions right. have you produced? And can you tell us a little bit about some of your yeah. your participants or yeah, some of absolutely. the successful businesses that are, might have come out of that? So for Accelerate UH specifically, like you said, it's a private-public partnership between the University of Hawaii and Sultan Ventures. Uh, we've had four cohorts come through that program. And again, the, a testament to the innovation at in Hawaii, and especially at the University of Hawaii, our, our cohort, um, we have over 20 companies so far that we've invested in, and there's not one sector that necessarily rises to the top because there's an incredible amount happening mm -hmm. at the university. So we have clean tech, we have biotech, we have ag tech, ed tech, mm -hmm. uh, tech tech. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a lot going on, and uh -huh. it's, it's because University of Hawaii is actually one of the top third in the nation in terms of innovation, and most people don't really realize don't really that. don't really get that. Yeah, and it's yeah. just right in our backyard. So. Mm -hmm. And I think um, here at Think Tech and in other programs, you always think of that innovation or the technology sector, mm -hmm. but technology can, as with the food accelerator on mm -hmm. Maui, it can be in a number of different fields. Yep. So you've also <laughs> been very, very interested in beyond incubation, innovation, acceleration, mm -hmm. is just in keeping current in information and what and how small businesses are working as right, well. Right. So a couple of years ago, you enrolled in our Emerging <laughs> Leaders program, yes. which actually Emerging Leaders is SBA's kind of mini MBA program. And we run this program each year. We've had it, I think, for six years now. But we were really pleased when uh, Tarek decided he <laughs> wanted to see what we were doing. He wanted to participate. And he also wanted to improve his skills. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say, we were really pleased to be able to select you <laughs> and have you in that class and he not only shared great stories he had a great sense of humor and really helped us elevate the whole class by sharing a lot of his experiences and maybe you can speak a little sure. bit to that class yeah you know, it was an honor being selected for that class um, you know another pillar of Sultan Ventures is um, this concept called Kaizen right continuous mm -hmm. development continuous um, 
you know, dealt over time. And so for me, the emerging leaders things was two, was two things. One, it was my own personal um, introspective analysis of how we're, how we're running Salt Adventures, right? It's always, it's always good to do those um, periodic checkpoints and uh, anal uh -huh. analyze your own business. The second is um, Salt Adventures is all things startups, especially mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And so although there's the venture capital model for high growth startups, that doesn't, that isn't the only thing that's important to us, right? We mm -hmm. want to see how other small businesses are, um, what their struggles are here in Hawaii and, and how they're overcoming them and is there any way we can help with them, right? 96% mm -hmm. of all businesses in Hawaii are small businesses. Yes. And so there needs to be solutions for those businesses as well. So the Emerging Leaders program was, was you know, doubly important to me <laughs> because not only did I get to analyze my own company and, and have lessons learned um, from that introspective analysis, but also get to work with the, the greater Hawaii community as well. Mm -hmm. So in this class, we select 15 students each year, and they come from all different industries. So not only did we have the accelerator venture capitalist in the class, but he also was with food manufacturers. He was in there with con government contractors, construction companies, healthcare uh, businesses. So it kind of took him a little bit out of his element to really learn. But the uh, participants in this class have to be in business for at least three years. They have to have at least one employee. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have a minimum of annual revenue from 400000 each year up to um, $5 million. It's a, it's a pretty big range. So right. we saw all different kinds of people in and businesses, industries in this class. And then you use your business and have to share yeah. what, what you're using in your technical processes and right. how you're doing your HR and things like that. We're all that. learning from each other. So yeah. it, it was kind of a big sharing piece with that. <laughs> yeah. So, and how many, what is your employee structure look like? Mm -hmm. Are you, um, I mean, uh, through your work, you're definitely creating good paying jobs mm -hmm. here in Hawaii and encouraging people to get started. Mm -hmm. How about with your, your business itself? Yeah, so we have a team, um, over the last couple of years, we've, we, we kept doubling almost every quarter or so. Mm -hmm. So it went from... Fast growth. Yeah, <laughs> it went from, um, you know, the two to three of us to three or four of us to four to six of us. So we're about eight um, full-time now. Um, mm -hmm. But we also, again, education is important to us. So we have a whole army of interns, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, we just, this summer, I think we had 13 uh, people in our summer fellowship, oh, and that's, that's from all across the U.S. as well. So mm -hmm. we had, of course, a, a lot from um, University of Hawaii, but we had, or we still actually have upstairs, um, participants from Dartmouth in our summer fellowship, Cornell, Boston College, UCLA. So we're getting, we're, we're attracting talent mm -hmm. here to Hawaii and demonstrating what we can do here in Hawaii. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. You know, how do the, how do the students or your interns find you? Some of it's organic. So the mm -hmm. UCLA one, for example, said, I heard about your firm um, at the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator, which we've never even visited, but they've mm -hmm. heard about Sultan Ventures, which uh -huh. is really cool to hear. And he wanted to know if he, um, he's interested in venture capital. He wanted to know if he can do a summer program with us. So we said, mm. yeah, absolutely. So, uh -huh. you know, that's those types of things. Um, for Cornell, for example, uh, Melly James, who's the head of New Ventures for Sultan Ventures, mm -hmm. uh, she's actually Cornell University's entrepreneur in residence. Oh, and so she'll, okay. she goes out there, I think, once a semester to meet with all the entrepreneurial students, lets them know about this program, and they actually come out mm -hmm. to Hawaii for the summer. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's uh, commendable there um, that we're expanding Hawaii's reputation and also encouraging youth to get and young professionals to get into this field and show interest. Yeah. I actually referred an intern That's to right. you yes, that was several years way. ago yeah. and his family was calling me up and saying, will you please tell him to get a job? He <laughs> loves it over there. That's where he wants yeah. to be. So I think that's uh, doing a great thing for our our uh, state as well and wonderful your reputation uh, kind of precedes you yeah, yeah. we're going to go to a quick break folks i hope you'll stay with us and we'll be right back to talk a little bit more with Tarek sultan of accelerate uh and sultan ventures aloha this is reg baker with business in hawaii we're a show that broadcasts every thursday at two o'clock we would love to hear from you and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, viva health coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. 
And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. So Emerging Leaders is just one of the programs that SBA offers to Hawaii's small business owners and entrepreneurs to really help them again grow and succeed and accomplish their business goals. We've got a couple of other programs that will be coming up here shortly. Um, uh, actually activities for small business owners. One of those is the Small Business Fair that will be coming up on August Saturday, August 6th, and it's going to be at Honolulu Community College. It's free. It's multiple tiers of activities to connect you with other resources in the community, even lenders and other business consultants. So you can go to sba.gov backslash hi to get some more information about that upcoming program. So one more uh, resource for small businesses here. Um, with the SBA's uh, Accelerator Award, mm -hmm. um, Sultan Ventures and Accelerate UH really kind of kicked off, mm -hmm. kind of or pushed themselves on to the next level as well. <laughs> yeah. So you've indicated that not only that award helped you launch another cohort, mm -hmm. get more people involved, but it also seemed to attract a lot of attention and yeah. open some more opportunities, yeah. which is definitely one of the things we want to see SBA facilitate right. with small yeah, it businesses. Was through the SBA, the, the 2015 award, we were able to um, get a lot of the national recognition, like I mentioned. From that, it seems to have kicked off this awesome momentum um, because the very a few months later, we won the EDA award. So we were one of, I think, 17 entities nationally to be selected for this. So that's bringing more money into the state of Hawaii, more towards economic development, more helping small businesses, mm -hmm. and that you know those two in turn helped us win the um, be selected in the inaugural Village Capital Communities, another national. Um, recognition. And that's here a brand new one, isn't that's it? It's pretty recent. Yeah. yeah, so this Village Capital is a global uh, fund and global nonprofit as well. And they, for the first time ever, kicked off selecting 16 different communities, 16 different cities across the nation to democratize entrepreneurship, right? And to help mm -hmm. um, democratize it in the sense of geographically. So it shouldn't only go towards the top three cities, New York, mm -hmm. um, Boston, and, and Silicon Valley, but also democratize it in the form of inclusion, right? So there should be more women involved in venture capital mm -hmm. and startups. There should be more, um, you know, ethnic minorities involved in venture capital and in startups, right? So. Uh, through our work um, here in Hawaii with the SBA, with the EDA, you know, we're just, it's just continuing to build momentum and getting that national recognition mm -hmm. here for, for Hawaii. How do you feel that Hawaii plays in that? You, said, you mentioned mm -hmm. you know, uh, location, women, minority mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, native Hawaiian entrepreneurs yeah. who may not really play mm -hmm. in the bigger venture capital uh, picture. Yeah. How do you see Hawaii? We are, we are without a doubt like trailblazing here because mm -hmm. um, and I, I know a lot of these stats because we just applied for the next <laughs> Growth Accelerator Award for right. the SBA, so uh -huh. fingers crossed. 48% um, of our cohort has been um, non-Caucasian, non mm -hmm. right? Uh, nationally, less than, I think, 3% of VCs are women. Mm -hmm. And um, 3 to 7, depending upon which year and which stat, you know, 50% of the Salt Vendors team is women, right? Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I think 28 or 30 percent of our startups have women as in a leading role. So mm -hmm. um, when you look, so forget about us for a second and look at Hawaii as a whole, almost every single startup entity that, that's focused towards startups, I mean, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. has a woman lead, mm -hmm. right? So HCDC is a woman lead. Um, uh, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association is Melly James, right? Mm -hmm. Who's also with Sultan Ventures. Head of Hawaii Angels is a, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Head of Blue Startups is a woman. Head of Energy Accelerator, the two founders are women, right? And it just, I mean, the list goes on and it on. It makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing. Like, I, I, love, I love our community because we're so far ahead of other communities. Mm -hmm. I actually spend more time this year traveling than I've been in Hawaii. I've seen at least 15 cities so far this year. You just got I back. just got back from another city. <laughs> um, and I... I like, honestly, we are ahead of the curve almost mm -hmm. in every aspect, right? So we How just need cool to keep doubling down uh, on our momentum here. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's, uh, that puts you in pretty good stead then for SBA's competition because this year they are yeah. emphasizing getting out to, you know, more of that underserved uh, community yeah. and, and will be giving you extra points, so <laughs> to speak, for, you know, women's participation, mm -hmm. minority participation, location, location, location. Yeah. And we should be hearing about that before the end of August. I know, I'm nervous. So <laughs> they were, there were a lot, I think the first year, there were about 400. I think we have 800 no. applications this year, and they're looking at still just about 80 awards. No. So 
Um, you've shown that you can compete. <laughs> Hawaii has come out, yeah. uh, you know, on top with uh, no no other states got more than three awards. Yeah. So That's crazy. you know, it was like great to see that uh, <laughs> we're up there, and it is attracting attention mm -hmm. to our state. So, yeah. um, is the the, the funding that you receive from EDA, is mm -hmm. that going to expand your reach or are you going to be able to be accessible, you know, different islands or? So the beauty behind what the way we operate our program is we like to leverage our strengths and for whatever we're doing. So the University of Hawaii is a strength in that, um, not only in terms of innovation that comes out, but because of its reach, it's a system wide. Mm -hmm we have system-wide support from the university, which means we can reach all the islands, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the SBA award, we were able to increase our presence um, from a kind of a marketing standpoint, if you mm -hmm. will, right? So letting everyone know, like, this is nationally recognized. Uh, this is, uh, we did some community events, um, but with the EDA grant, it's actually now, instead of pulling people towards us, we're we're pushing out into the communities, right? Mm -hmm. So that type of funding and support allows us to get even more deeper, more deeper, mm -hmm. deeper into the communities mm -hmm. um, and literally be hands-on. So for example, um, just this past mm -hmm. May, we did the first ever entrepreneurship event um, uh, in on the island of Lanai. They had never, ever had a, an event before. That's incredible. Yeah. What was that like? What did you do? Unfortunately, I wasn't there because oh. I was traveling. <laughs> um, no, but the team, yeah. <laughs> but the team, um, they, they did a, basically a two-day boot camp of like how to, how to start a startup, right? What are the best practices, lean methodology, and that type of discipline traverses all types of startups, right? It could be a lifestyle startup, it could be a small to medium-sized enterprise, or it could be mm -hmm. a high-growth startup, but those best practices um, Need to need to be known and, and practiced upon, um, no matter what type of startup. And what kind of reception did you get on Lanai? I heard people were crying. Oh, like, really? They were so excited about uh -huh. it. They're like, you know, I always had these ideas. I never knew how to get started. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm so annoyed that I missed it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, do, do you have any idea, just for curiosity's mm -hmm. sake, as well, on numbers of people who participated, or? Do, I, I mean, think I was. Um, Close to 50, I'm not sure exactly. Wow. But I know in the, the final picture, there was over 30 people mm -hmm. in that picture alone. So, mm -hmm. And, I, and um, somebody just told me the number, but it's, it's slipping my mind. But I think it was about a third women. Mm -hmm. so. And that's incredible. We hear so often that, you know, it's, it's difficult to connect with people on the smaller yeah. islands. Um, because I also have American Samoa, Guam, and mm -hmm. um, Pacific affiliated okay. islands in my portfolio or, or yeah. companies and, and small um, small business owners to service yeah. but it's also connectivity getting people to turn out mm -hmm. um, the, the you know discussion of their ideas they sometimes are very proprietary yeah. or very parochial in their approach yeah. it sounds like you didn't find that oh no um, not at all they were they're line. super excited and that's kind of one of the things we talk about is like you need to be able to share your idea if you want it to take off right mm -hmm. so don't don't worry about somebody stealing it worry about executing on it mm -hmm. and executing on the right idea what the market wants not what you mm -hmm. think it wants mm -hmm. yeah Oh, so identifying the right places to go, the gap, and yep. be able to get your pitch together to yep. know what your business <laughs> is doing. So, right. and that works obviously with Salt and Venture and Accelerate UH as well as with the smallest mom and pop, yeah. or brother and sister, <laughs> as the case may be. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, and uh -huh. speaking of sister and SBA, um, you know, my sister uh, when she started her practice. Um, actually got an SBA loan to help mm -hmm. start her OBGYN practice. And so it's really important for small businesses. A lot of times they'll think either I have to do this 100% on my own or they watch Shark Tank and think mm -hmm. like they have to get investor money. But no, there's a plethora of different capital um, resources out there and you have to just find the right capital at the right time. Mm -hmm. And in this case for uh, you know our sister, it was some partially self-funded and partially an SBA mm -hmm. loan. So, so thank you as well to the <laughs> SBA for that. Well, it's like we said, it's a yeah. family affair yeah. there. And uh, and how did how did your sister Aya, mm -hmm. she just knew about SBA? Was it through just her work so she previously worked, or? Sure, so she worked, um, she went to a few banks um, mm -hmm. and I was actually in the Merging Leaders program at the same time. So I'm not sure exactly how it came about, but basically at the same time we were like, yes, the SBA loan makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I do all things financials for startups, so okay. I actually was able to put together her financials for the bank okay. and for the loan, so that, that worked out really well. Um, yeah, so how, would, how did she find the process since mm -hmm. you were involved, and that's one of the things we <laughs> always hear is, yeah. you know, SBA financing, lots of red tape, yeah. but it's not it's so not much that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's essentially you put together your, um, your P&L projections and um, the statement cash flows and mm -hmm. you just 
you work with the bank. In this case, there wasn't much iteration because I do this for a living, so uh -huh. it came out pretty much fine the first time. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, and the bank was like, okay, well, this this makes sense with an SBA loan. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So, so you'd, you'd recommend then, you know, an SBA loan as well as having a small business work with, say, a consultant or, yeah. you know, yeah, say I would, SBDC or If you're a small like business that. and you don't know where to start, um, uh, this is the perfect start. Uh, go to SBA. And mm -hmm. We have an open door policy. Email us at Sultan Ventures. Like happy to work with any and all businesses. Mm -hmm. And we not we might not necessarily always work with a small business, but we'll point you in the right direction. And I'm sure it's the same with with the SBA, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a plethora of resources yeah. there. And we do look at all different types of business. So your right. sister as a medical professional, nope. we we'll look at funding there. We look at uh, helping startups in pretty much any industry. We look at. Uh, yeah you know, mom and pops, we do yep. a lot of retail, we do a lot of re restaurants, and it's just the SBA guarantees the funding, yep. um, even when you have the best of consultants and at any stage of the business cycle. So yep. startup will probably help her expand and build that EVA office as well, <laughs> or, you know, um, and she's right here downtown. Yeah, so. she's in this building as well, mm -hmm. so she's, her, uh, her business model is to um, work with a lot of the downtown professional executive women, right? So you mm -hmm. don't may, might not have a lot of time to take off of work, drive an hour, half an hour somewhere, wait in, in a lobby for 45 minutes to an hour and a half sometimes, and then uh -huh. drive back. Who, who can take three to four hours off of work? Here, you just literally, you don't have to worry about driving. You walk over to her, the Pioneer Plaza, uh -huh. um, go up to the 10th floor. So and, she, she knew yeah. her, her skill, she knew what she wanted to yeah. do, she identified yeah. a niche market. And she got and her whole business model down in and out in under an hour, right? And then the business name is Honu... Honu Women's Health. Honu Women's yeah. Health. So congratulations, <laughs> another family venture yeah, there. Yeah, so really, yeah. really excited about That's that. That's very good. And Hawaii has a very strong history of families sticking together and st developing businesses and even diversifying that business. Yeah. It's been a very, very successful model. So it, it is the mindset. It is a, a, how a lot of people work together. Yeah, so absolutely. we thank you for everything yeah. that you're doing with the community, <laughs> and we you. congratulate yeah. you as well yeah. on your success. Where do you think you're going? And if you gave us a quick soundbite, and sure. what's the future? So the you? so the, we get asked that question a lot. Um, we think the future for Hawaii is, we have a lot of things that we're always testing. Um, right now we're actually testing a new investment model for small businesses that mm -hmm. kind of pivots uh, away from the traditional venture capital. So we're really excited about that model. You know, we're, what we're doing with Village Capital is an energy and ag-focused accelerator program. Okay. So we're really excited about that. We're working with Energy Accelerator and Maui Food Innovation Center. Maui Food Innovation Center Good. is another SBA growth mm -hmm. accelerator winner, right? So um, there's a lot that we're excited about. And we just, like I said earlier, we just want to keep uh, doubling down and, and building upon this momentum as a as not only as our individual entities, but as a startup paradise ecosystem. And it's great because when your business wins, Hawaii yeah. wins. Yeah, so absolutely. that's a great thing. And so I think we're going to wrap up today. Um, and thank you for joining. Tariq Sultan, thanks yeah. for joining us. Uh, Pleasure to SBA be here. Hawaii, SBA America. Um, we'll look forward to talking again with you soon. Aloha.